James. So nice to meet Hi, you. Congrat you. Congratulations on He Never Left. How are you feeling? Tired. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's valid. They're ready As to get it out. So. Yeah. Exactly. Oh my God. I know. Well, because you guys had a festival tour last year. So it's been like, it's, I know that feeling of like being on festival and just wanting to get it finally out into the world. Yeah. So it's got to be such an, especially at Halloween. Like what a great yeah. feeling to have it come out yeah. like, around Halloween. It's full circle. Yeah. It's we, we've been working on this for, I mean, three years of my creative life, at least, if not more. So oh my God. And that's not it. Yeah. It's, it's been a lot from conception to writing to every, it's, it's been a long time. So I really love the Halloween vibes in this movie, like the intro with the autumnal leaves and the trigger. I, I just love how you really make this feel like Halloween. So why, besides the fact that we all love Halloween, why did you want to set this specifically on Halloween? A lot of that comes, Halloween? Yeah, a, a lot of that comes from just the things I've been working on for the last few years with uh, okay. my buddy, Mike Balif, who, who runs Witching Season Films, which is all Halloween centric. And so... When I pitched in the original idea, it was more just like a, a crime thriller movie. It didn't really have a lot of the mass killer elements in it. And so he actually suggested, why don't you add a mass killer into this? And so I took that oh. idea and I went back and I did two rights. And it kind of just fit together. And and then uh, at that point, it was like, well, this, this idea definitely now fits under what Witching Season does. Why not just bring that in and add that aesthetic to it? And so um, I'm glad we did. It definitely... We, we get a lot of, a lot of compliments on, on the visuals and that I have to give all credit of that to Mike. He's a, he's a October uh, cinematographer at his, at his core. He, he loves to get out there and do it. So um, I think he did a great job. So I'm, I'm, I'm glad, I'm glad we landed it when we did. So. Yeah. Well, where did you film, where did you film at least the beginning with all of the full, like, cause it just really does that, that vibe and it's so vibrant. I'm like, where did you, where did you find so many leaves that were the same color? <laughs> Like, it's just like perfect <laughs> so that is the that's the alpine loop in utah that's up by sundance oh. kind of between sundance and park city up where they do the festival so if you keep driving up above sundance that loop takes you all the way up in the mountains and, and around and there's only about a week and a half two weeks where that looks like that so we we had to get up there and get it quick um, that's so stressful you're like all right guys get to get like we have to get yeah we, we were we were watching the leaves and like uh no, exactly okay. like the yes, forecast because... for the leaves yeah, we had to we had to get up there quick and and there's even some shots where we wanted things to match a little more. So I'd like break a branch off this tree and hold the branch for depth of field shots and just trying to balance everything out. And so yeah, we <laughs> it was it was I wild, but we, we got it. We got it. So indie filmmaking. But but Halloween fun aside, I think also something I really love about this movie is that you're looking, it's a slasher, it's Halloween, but you also are dealing with some pretty intense subject matter, especially what life is like for people after they get out of prison. And I don't think a lot of people realize how difficult it is. And I wanted to hear more from you about wanting to incorporate that into the film because it is such an important discussion and you handle it so well with especially Colin Cunningham's performance. But I was just curious about integrating that into the plot and really telling a story about someone who's really just trying, but the system is broken. Um, yeah, so I have the benefit of having very, very first world experience in this. So I, I actually work in Gosh. law enforcement. Oh. So I've been a police officer for many years. And before that, I actually worked in a prison as a correctional officer. So oh I've, seen the, whole, okay. I've seen the full circle of this. And so, yeah, the, the character of Gabe is very much based on people who I know and who I've seen, oh, wow. not any one person, but like, you know, the, yeah. the collective. And so I've seen that struggle and I've seen people who have made one bad mistake, but they are trying, but they, they are just stuck and they can't do it. You know, it's like, it's like what Gabe says, you know, he's a 40 year old man working at a snow cone back. I mean, it's, it's for $9 an hour, like the yeah, embarrassment of it all, but so like, yeah, that always, you know, is something I see a lot. And so it just, it, it's always on my mind seeing, seeing people with doing this struggle. And so bringing that in was almost second nature. Like it, it was something I knew oh, yeah. so I wanted to like, bring that into the character and so I'm, I'm glad that seems to be landing with people who watch it and that was my intent you know to make this person he's 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 done some bad things but he's not a bad guy but he's definitely a victim of his actions but also his inability to to progress in life because because of where he's at so yeah, yeah I'm, I'm the phone call with his friend with like has a kid I don't know it's like 
my just like side note my mom works with he like used to work with people or does work with people who were incarcerated and she helps with them get okay. jobs so sure. i've like talked to her a lot about this and seeing this like like discussed in a genre film was really impactful just like i don't know just giving a voice to that kind of thing i think is so important even in a in a slasher like it's so yeah. important yeah well i just so. i wanted people to feel when they watch this movie i mean yeah you can get on a, a crazy slasher and just watch people get massacred and that's great but I, I, I just wanted to make something a little different where you actually yeah. like the characters really, you know what I mean? Like you can really relate to them and and, and each yeah. death hurts. I didn't want it just to be like, oh, you know, that this teenager died, that teenager died. Like everyone, I wanted to have in, have impact on you and yeah. like you get to know these people. And and uh, so, yeah, I, again, I hope it works. <laughs> I, I feel like, I mean, I'm proud of it. I think we did something cool, but, um, you know, ultimately it's up to people who watch it, not me. I'm sure there are people yeah. who are like, yeah, it's boring and too slow or this, you know, you always get Everyone, that. Everyone's the critic. Don't read the yeah. comments, et cetera. Et cetera. <laughs> yeah, at the end of the day, if, if, if it stands out and they think about it and they feel something, that's, that's ultimately hopefully what I, what I set out to do. Amazing. Well, you also, Colin Cunningham as Gabe is incredible and he has such a great monologue and he has that really that a really good kind of ability to like go back and forth between sc like scary but also em empathetic so what was that like casting Colin and then working with him through the process of becoming Gabe um well first off a quick point on your monologue thing that actually was Colin he came up with that no so, way that yeah. was all improv like he improv that improv. He, no way he it, yeah I, I know people always say, oh, it's my favorite scene in the movie. It's like, cool. I, I was going like to say, it's such a good, it's such a good, it, it sells the emotional impact yeah. right off the bat. I it, feel like so well. Moment. Yeah. For yeah. Him. So he he came to me as we were starting the film. He's like, hey, I've got this idea. I don't know where it's going to fit. I don't know if it's going to work. Can I just shoot this, this monologue where I'm just kind of talking to myself? And I'm like, you know what? Why the hell not? Right. Let's, let's see what we can do. And it ended up being such a pivotal moment and such a great transition between scenes so yeah it, it definitely is another humanizing moment that really landed so he again I'll, I'll credit the call on that. that he wrote that he wrote that whole thing and then did it yeah he i mean he did have different versions of it he had one that he'd written the script and then he the, the version that he did was very much based on what he'd written but he kind of would take liberties and okay. go off in the direction so we shot like 15 of them so there's a lot oh, of different God. versions and yeah he's <laughs> He, he's a true actor from from his core i mean this is what he does yeah all day every day so he he brought in a level of of experience and wisdom that a lot of indie people i don't think necessarily always get and so yeah it was a balance of trusting some of his things but also kind of getting what i wanted you know so we, we ultimately worked very well together i mean it was high stress but we were able to make it work but he um he came so prepared that it wasn't very difficult to to get what we needed. He was so ready, and he and I had talked about mm -hmm. the character so much before. I mean, months we'd been working. Uh, oh, that's okay. That's awesome that you had. So he, a lot of indie projects do not have that kind of prep. So that's so nice that he ha like you guys could talk and you could share stories. I'm assuming about like your experiences and the character and like what you why. Sorry, words, but like yeah, but that's got to be so incredible to have that preparation time. Yeah, he. Um, he actually lives in St. George with uh, with our other actress, Jessica. She, the, the girl we cast as Carly lives in the same area. And so they just rehearsed. They they met up and they were just rehearsing for weeks leading up to it. And we'd, we'd touch base and talk about things. And so when they got in that room and they started acting, I, I've told this story a lot. I, I remember looking to Mike, uh, our witching season owner and cinematographer and all that. And I just like, man, I don't really have a job right now. Like they just were so ready like Isn't that nice though you're like oh thanks for making my job so easy we only have to do a couple takes <laughs> only a couple what was the first day we started filming was that scene when they're oh. fighting and oh okay it, it, it built confidence in all of us because i think at the end of that first day we were watching some of that footage and how good they were performing it's like oh we're we're on to something here like they're really good and we i think we have some characters that are going to work so that, it was it was mm -hmm. motivating to, even just on day one to be like okay this is this is good so that's so good well and especially i think because the poster is such like old school horror vibes which is great but then they cut you come in and you get something more on top of that which i think is great for audiences especially when you're like oh yeah it's a halloween slasher and you're like actually it is but there's more going on underneath it it's not no offense to other slashers but like they can be shallow and 
I like what you did here in trying to give it more just feeling and more complexity. Yeah, it was a balancing act because we we wanted to pay yeah. honor and pay tribute to the to the classic slashers, you know, regardless of your yeah. character. We those elements were important, but me who I I like realism and what I do, and so I was like trying to find that mix. And uh, what I always say is the the goal was like, hey, if there's a uh, if there's a mass killer in a real world situation, what would it be like? And so that was kind of what I mm. just ran to try to well, set that. Yeah. Up. Well, like the sound design, especially when you're hearing through the walls and imitating that vibe of hearing people through the walls in hotels and like that feels so real. You're not like showing the blood, you're you're showing the other person's experience. And I love that again, that like, what would you do in that scenario? Because I yeah. truly don't know what I would actually do. Like, I would love to think I'd be a hero, but like, who knows? You know what I mean? So that use of sound design, I think is also so helpful in grounding it and not making it, you know, as like sensational as maybe any, another True. slasher would be. Sure. I mean, we've all been there, right? You, like you just said, we've all been in motels where you're hearing things through the wall, some good, some bad, and you're just like, what the hell is going so, like, what do I do? Do I say something? Do I yeah, not? I like, is it none of my business? Like, will I make yeah. someone angry? It's always that weird thing. And like, again, that, that weird interaction, like, like potential interaction is really interesting sure. here. Yeah, I just thought it was something we'd all been through, right? Most everyone's been in the hotel. Everyone's <laughs> had noisy neighbors. Everyone can relate to that, right? So, again, just an opportunity to, on a very subtle level, give somebody something to relate to, right? So, yeah. So I'm glad like, I, that, was, that was the intent. Yeah, and just before we wrap up, we have our mask killer. Obviously, we have an iconic name, an iconic mask. How did y'all design the mask? Is pretty simple, but I love how weird it is it's like almost it's like it's not human enough and it's very strange yeah. so how did y'all come to that design because I feel like it's got to be difficult to figure out how much is too much or how little is too little and what that sweet spot is so I, I really turned our mask designer Billy with um open grave effects I, I kind of just turned him loose I had some sketches and they weren't very good I just had an idea <laughs> I just sent it to him and I, I wanted him to really get invested in it and so my my direction was basically here's the idea and i want a mask where depending on the angle you film it from it's going to have a different emotion so because a, a lot of masks on killers are very one thing there's they're just very yeah. universal now to their credit a lot of times that's what makes them scary right they're, they're emotional yeah. they're just it's like a, like looking at a spider in the corner of a wall it just sits there so i understand why they do that i just again i wanted to put a little bit of a spin on it and so yeah, when you watch the movie, if you look at it from one side, he's smiling. The other side, he's frowning. He's got a scar here. This side's got some blood. Just to kind of visually give us something to play with. Um, cool. And yeah, well, that's, Billy. That's cool for you for the cinematography in terms of setups. Like, all right, cool. Where should we go now for the mask? Because that's got to be both complicated, but also cool in terms of just another cool element, a production yeah. element to add to the vibes of the, of it, of the scenes with him. We, I know we talked about it. I am sure that we messed up sometimes and didn't and kind of forgot about the emotions, but we did make a conscious effort to during certain scenes. Yeah. He's smiling here, right? When he's there's a scene with Carly and he's got the smile as opposed to the other. So again, a lot of it gets lost when you're filming and getting different angles, but we, we did make a conscious effort yeah. to try to show those those emotions on on the mask. So that's awesome. Um, well, we have to wrap up, but thank you so much and congratulations on getting this out there to the world. Three years of work and now it's out there. Thank you so much. Well, thank James. you. I and appreciate it. It is available now on VOD, everyone, and digital. So please go watch it. Go check it out. Uh, he never left.